Hello, welcome to this lesson in engineering mechanics. Here we're going to cover the cross product and we're going to talk about the cross product in terms of math, in terms of, of the mathematical definition. We're not going to talk about moments in specific here, but I'm kind of giving you a little bit of a preview. Basically the moments calculation that we've been doing in two dimensions is kind of a simplified version because it's in two dimensions. But in reality, it's a cross product of two vectors. And when we get to more complicated problems in three dimensions, it's difficult to do this two dimensional calculation. Uh, so what we do is resort to cross product in, in three dimensions. So you're going to need a couple of tricks in your tool bag in order to be able to calculate vectors, uh, vector cross products. Now I know that everybody watching this has actually been exposed to cross products before. You've probably been exposed to it in a physics course. You've probably been exposed to it in a calculus course. But just in case you're joining me now for the first time and you haven't taken those classes with me, I want to do this section and do it justice on the cross product. I'm going to warn you a little bit. It's going to get uh, to be a slog uh, to get through it in the middle. Uh, but I, I think sometimes when I teach these classes, it's worth five extra minutes to go through, or maybe 15 extra minutes, to go through some details. But when we get to the end of this lesson, I guarantee you that you will be more confident in your understanding of the cross product than when you started, uh, unless you just use these things all the time, maybe you already have that insight. But I bet most people watching it will be more comfortable at the end. So just get through it with me, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I promise there's a point to it. All right, so the cross product of, of two vectors. Uh, we've already talked about the dot product a long time ago, and the complement to that, uh, or the uh, alternative to that, sometimes we end up using the cross product. So we say vector C is equal to the cross product of vector A times vector B. Now you should know, since you've taken classes before, that this is not a straight multiplication. This X, it indicates a cross product. And since vectors have magnitude and direction, then when we operate and cross A into B, then the resulting vector that we get also has a magnitude and a direction. All right, so that's a little different right off the bat than the dot product. Remember, we dot two vectors together, we get a number back, a scalar. You just get four or negative three back for a dot product. But for a cross product, you're always going to get a vector back. Okay, A cross B will give us the vector C. Now the magnitude of this cross product, or the magnitude of the result here, um, is something that we can use occasionally here. Um, the magnitude, notice I haven't put any bar on the top of it, so you can see the magnitude of the vector C is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B, right? Um, and times the sine of the angle between these guys here. This is a direct analog, or, a, or at least a direct comparison, to what we did in the dot product. Remember in the dot product we said the magnitude of the dot product can be uh, of a dot b is a times b uh, times or magnitude of a times magnitude of b times the cosine of the angle between them. Now this should look somewhat similar to you. If you remember the dot product was defined as uh, magnitude of A times magnitude of B times cosine of the angle between them. And this is real similar, magnitude of A times magnitude of B times the sine of the angle between them. But when you do this calculation in terms of a cross product, what you're getting back is the magnitude of the, of the vector that's, the, cro that's the, uh, the, the cross of those two guys here. So the, the magnitude of this vector that's the cross product here is given by this calculation. But since it's a vector, it also has a direction. So the direction of this cross product is given by the right-hand rule, which we've already given you a preview of, because in some of those moment problems, I was kind of trying to, to tell you, hey, if you curl your fingers and your, your thumb comes out in the direction of the, 